Good evening, everyone. Let's have a round of applause for our graduates. Please be seated. Before we begin, if you have a cell phone, we ask that you please put it on silent. My name is Anne-Marie Badeau. I am a proud alumna of GPH and a member of the Dean's Council. Today's ceremony celebrates not only the achievement of each an individual graduate, but also the accomplishments of our entire school. In keeping with this community spirit, we ask that all graduates remain seated until the last candidate has crossed the stage. Additionally, guests, we remind you that each graduate will have his or her picture taken as they walk across the stage. At this time, I invite you all to observe a moment of silence in memory of our departed MPH student. Oluke Oyode Christian Osuntukon, who passed away suddenly last October and would have graduated today. We remember him for his passion for serving the most vulnerable and his dedication to excellence. We are all grateful to have benefited from his presence as a classmate and as a student and for the example he set in answering the call to the profession of public health. Please join me for a moment of silence. Now, it is my distinct pleasure to introduce Dr. Deborah Furholden, Dean of the School of Global Public Health. GPH Class of 2023. We're in this together. This is my first graduation. It's been beyond an honor and a privilege to get to know some of you and the ones that I didn't get to know. I hope I get to know you through our Forever Alumni Network. I hope you know you are a part of the Forever NYU GPH family. Today we acknowledge and we celebrate you. I wanna take just a moment and acknowledge all of the amazing staff and volunteers. You don't know there were so many people. We spent so much time. We want this day to be just as magical as you are. So I acknowledge all of the staff and volunteers who put it all on the line to make sure that we have a great day. Thank you. I wanna acknowledge our great faculty. Um, I know you all interacted with them in your mentoring sessions and in class, but as a faculty member myself, what I know is I am because you are. We only get to be faculty because you come and you let us teach you and you teach us and you give us opportunities to get our dreams fulfilled. So I wanna acknowledge the faculty and I also wanna acknowledge your tremendous friends and family who can say without a doubt, but for my friends and family, I wouldn't have made it. That's me. So friends and family. And the most important acknowledgement of all and the reason we're all here is you all. Whatever you went through, whatever you had to become, whatever you had to do, whatever you had to forego to get here. All I know is you're here now we are so, so tremendously proud of you, and I am looking forward to celebrating you today. It is now my distinct honor and privilege to introduce the man who hired me. He is a mentor, he is a colleague, he is a friend, he is also our forever champion the 16th president of NYU, 
Dr. Anthony, that's it, Anthony, Dr. Andy Hamilton. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Verholden. Greetings, colleagues, family, friends, esteemed guests, and most of all, the outstanding, the amazing NYU School of Global Public Health Class of 2023. Congratulations to you all. And let me begin by first congratulating Dean Verholden on a wonderful first year in her tenure as the Dean of the NYU School of Global Public Health. I am so proud of all that this remarkable community has achieved and is accomplishing under her leadership. Now, on this very special afternoon, in this truly amazing setting, I stand here on this stage in front of all of you, and I have to confess something to you all. I don't think I have ever felt more like Elton John. <laughs> Why, I hear you ask? Well, like Sir Elton, I have a jaunty English accent. Like Sir Elton, I'm on my farewell tour, complete with packed crowds like this one and wearing gorgeous gowns like Sir Elton. <laughs> Over these next two weeks, I speak at 20 commencement ceremonies. And this year, it will be the last time that I get the opportunity and the privilege to address graduates as NYU's president before I step down from the role in the summer and return to the faculty, to teaching and research. But as I take this farewell tour, as I visit and speak at the graduation ceremonies of most of NYU schools and the big graduation ceremony that we have on Wednesday in Yankee Stadium. One thing is very clear to me, and that is NYU schools and NYU's graduates are thriving. Just look at NYU Global Public Health. This has been a remarkable period for this school. More than 100 research proposals were submitted during this past year, and research grant expenditures, commitment to scholarship, to research, exceeded $15 million, all of them focused on advancing critical scholarship in areas that impact every aspect of our health. This year, saw the successful launch of the Doctor of Public Health program, which will train public health practitioners to work in the most underserved parts of the world. And this year's graduating class was the first cohort to fully enjoy global public health's remarkable, beautiful new building, as well as to get to travel abroad again after the pandemic. And those are just a tiny number of highlights from an extraordinary year for GPH. And at the heart of this school, and at the heart of everything you've achieved, is you, our students. We hear a lot about divisions in the world today, but when I look out at this room, when I look out at you, I see that you are an antidote to division. When I look at the NYU School of Global Public Health, I see unity. You are united in bringing respect, equity, and integrity to your work. You are united in your dedication to the health and well-being of all populations. And you are united in your desire to make a positive impact through the people and the communities that you will reach. Yes, you are graduating at a fraught and a difficult time, and you will, in your careers, be navigating 
an ever-changing healthcare landscape. But I know, I have every confidence that you will draw on your talent and on your drive, as well as on the strengths of the NYU global public health community. You will draw on those things to make a difference wherever your paths lead you next. So to each and every graduating student, know that as you leave NYU, as you leave GPH, you take the best wishes and the pride of my wife Jenny, who is in the audience this afternoon, as well as pride and best wishes from me. I am the president of NYU, I represent the entire community, and so I can say with all heart and commitment that the NYU community is proud of you graduates of GPH, and we wish you heartiest congratulations and a fond farewell as you take these next steps in your career. Congratulations, class of 2023. And now I have the distinct pleasure to introduce our next speaker, our honored guest this afternoon, Dr. James E. K. Hildreth, President and CEO of Mehari Medical College. An infectious dis disease expert, Dr. Hildreth has been instrumental in transforming institutions and lives. He emerged as a respected national figure in the response to the COVID-19 pandemic. In September 2020, he was appointed to the FDA Vaccines and Related Biological Products Advisory Committee that reviewed COVID-19 vaccine candidates for approval. And in February 2021, he was named to President Biden's Health Equity Task Force. He is also a key figure in driving the technological, academic, and clinical shift of the nation's largest private, historically black academic health sciences center, Mehari Medical College. He previously served as Dean of the College of Biological Sciences at the University of California, Davis, and Dr. Hildreth also spent 23 years at Johns Hopkins School of Medicine as student, postdoc, professor, and associate dean. Dr. Hildreth holds an MD from Johns Hopkins School of Medicine, and I am delighted to tell you that he holds his PhD from the university that used to employ me before I came to NYU. I was the president equivalent of Oxford University in the UK, and Dr. Hildreth received his PhD from Oxford, as well as a BA from Harvard University. He is a Rhodes Scholar who has been elected to the National Academy of Medicine, among many, many other accolades. It's an enormous honor for me to welcome Dr. Hildreth, ladies and gentlemen, our honored speaker this afternoon. Good afternoon to President Hamilton, Dean Furholden, to the faculty, the students, and families and friends of our graduates. I'm really pleased to have an opportunity to speak with you today and thank Dean Furholden for the invitation. I've listened to many graduation speeches as a student myself, as a faculty member, as a dean, and now as president. And the most memorable speeches have one thing in common. They're all brief <laughs> and to the point. And since I'd like my speech to be remembered by a few of you, I'm going to keep my comments as short as possible today. But that's kind of challenging for me because I'm a Baptist and it takes us three minutes just to clear our throats. So, <laughs> so bear with me. I asked Dean for Holden if there were any topics that I could touch on that might be of particular interest to the graduates today. And 
She said, there were none, but she told me that you all are determined to make a difference in the world. And I must say, I'm encouraged to hear that that is the case because that's what we need you all to do. So, class of 2023, you've experienced a unique educational uh, experience, having been trained during a pandemic. And you had to make the difficult shift from in-person learning to virtual for most of you. And while virtual pedagogy is efficient and convenient, it's a terrible way to learn, at least for some of us. But I hope that getting your degree in public health during a pandemic has affirmed your career choice and made you even more excited about getting out into the world and improving the health of communities. The statistics around COVID-19 pandemic show it to be the most significant global crisis since World War II. According to the WHO, more than 765 million cases of COVID-19 were reported and almost 7 million people died as a result of SARS-CoV-2. These are truly staggering numbers. The pandemic also took a significant toll here in the United States. More than 103 cases diagnosed and more than a million people died because of COVID-19. A striking feature of the pandemic in our country was the wide chasm of the burden of disease and death among minorities in our country. As a matter of fact, if you were black, Hispanic, or an indigenous person, you had a much, much higher risk of getting COVID-19 and dying from it than a white population. Thankfully, COVID-19 is receding into the rearview mirrors. And as a matter of fact, over the last several days, the WHO director and President Biden declared that COVID-19 is no longer a health emergency. But while it's not a health emergency, it's still a threat to many of us, especially those who have underlying conditions and who are immunocompromised. The pandemic had a significant impact on the global communities and virtually shut down many industries for the first time in recent memory. I was struck by reports from India that there were people living in communities that had never seen the clear blue sky before until COVID-19 shut down factories, parked cars and airplanes, and the skies cleared for the first time. This is a dramatic demonstration, if we needed one, that human activities are definitely having an effect on climate and driving climate change. There are several other important takeaways from the pandemic I'd like to share with you that might inform us and in how we might prepare for the next global crisis. First of all, COVID-19 demonstrated in a very dramatic way the interconnectedness of the 7.5 billion humans that occupy this planet. That was responsible for the rapid spread of SARS-CoV-2, but also responsible for the rapid spread of mis- and disinformation that proved a challenge for health care, health, public health professionals. The pan pandemic also revealed for many folks, not for others, <laughs> the wide gap and disparities in healthcare infrastructure and healthcare resources between low-income countries and high-income countries. As a matter of fact, when the United States had vaccinated 80% of the population here, there were countries in Africa and other places that still had not reached 10% vaccination for the populations in those places. The pandemic also highlighted the dangers of American exceptionalism. Scientists and public health professionals made many discoveries that led to life-saving recommendations in those places. And based, for example, let me give you one example. Based on work done in Europe and other places, SARS-CoV-2 was declared a airborne pathogen much sooner in other parts of the world than it was here. Why is that important? Because recognizing it as an airborne pathogen allowed us to take steps that saved thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of lives. So achieving the best health here in America could be accelerated by a bit of what I call cultural humility, recognizing that we as a country can learn some very important things from our global neighbors. The pandemic also put the awesome power of biomedical research on full display. The rapid development of effective COVID-19 vaccines was possible because of decades of fundamental research and translating those research findings into drugs and vaccines. I suggest to you as a basic scientist that basic science saved the world. The scientists who discovered messenger RNA in the 1960s, for which they won a Nobel Prize, could scarcely have imagined that their discovery would save the world from a pandemic 60 years later. 
The awesome power of scientists that I refer to has made possible something that we thought was a pipe dream just a few years ago. That is true precision medicine in which vast amounts of data subjected to machine learning and artificial intelligence can create treatment plans uniquely suited for each and every patient. These large data sets are continually growing through various omics in which every molecule of a certain type can be measured and quantified in a single cell or in tissues. Proteomics for proteins, glycomics for carbohydrates, lipidomics for lipids, transcriptomics for RNA, and of course, genomics for DNA. Unfortunately, precision medicine and omics have not translated into improvements of the overall health of the U.S. population, and it's not likely to do so anytime soon. Sorry. This is true despite the, spec, despite the fact that the U.S. spends more than $4 trillion on health care, which would be more, more appropriately referred to as sick care. I suggest that we need to focus on a different omics to achieve the goal of improving our health. I call it equitomics. Equitomics is when we take the existing medicines and approaches to preventive medicine that lead to reductions in high blood pressure, cancer, and other things, and make those available to the whole population. This is how we improve the health of everyone, and this is how we reduce that $4 trillion price tag. This does not require sequencing another protein or developing any more biased algorithms. What it requires is that we declare health care and health to be a basic human right and make sure that every person in the world has access to it. This is how we as a nation <laughs> this is how we as a nation reduce the four trillion dollar price tag we pay for treating sick people and finally, finally, finally rank among the healthiest nations in the world. Right now, despite spending more than any other country on the, on the globe for health care, we don't rank among the 10 healthiest nations in the world based on some metrics. As you heard from my introduction, I've been deeply involved in the fight against COVID-19, both at a local level in Nashville, but also as a national level, serving on the FDA vaccine and drug advisory committees on President Biden's Health Equity Task Force. Our charge as members of the President's Task Force was to make recommendations to the President on how best to close the chasm in the health status of Americans that was revealed by COVID-19. The final report to the President, if you're interested, from the task force is available on the HHS website, and there are more than 200 recommendations we made to the President about how to improve the health. And we had four major areas we focused on, data analytics and research, structural drivers and xenophobia, healthcare quality and access, and communications and collaborations. A major recommendation of our task force is, in fact, that health care be declared a human right and that access to quality health care be available to all Americans. We concluded our recommendations by summarizing the impact it would have if they were implemented. And I'll just go through these very briefly. There are four of them. First, community expertise and effective communication will be elevated in health care and public health. Two, health equity will be centered in all processes, practices, and policies. What we mean by that is that every level of government, local, state, and federal, whenever a decision is being made that impacts health, the special consideration will be given for the different needs, cultures, and expectations of minoritized communities. Third was everyone will have equitable access to high quality health care. And number four, data will accurately represent all populations and their experiences to drive equitable decisions. I must point out here that Data is most useful when it's disaggregated so that resources can be directed where they're most needed. And that was a really important recommendation. So the challenges facing public health professionals and you as graduates and the threats to a sustainable, healthy future for communities seem very daunting, to be honest with you. Widespread dissemination of myths and disinformation, the politicization of science and public health, underfunding of public health organizations and, and departments, lack of diversity among public health leaders, and COVID-19-related mass burnout 
and ways of retirement among public health professionals are among a few of these long list of challenges. But consider this quote from Professor Hugh Tilson from the Gilding School of Public Health, and I quote, it's not a dark time for public health, it's our time. It's a time that we've been preparing for since the start of public health, unquote. And consider this from Deloitte's white paper entitled Reimagining the Health, e health Ecosystem. Lingering deficiencies in our public health infrastructure are not due to a lack of collect, are due to a lack of collective purpose and will, not a lack of knowledge. We know the conditions that produce health and wellness, parks and playgrounds, good schools, quality affordable housing, broadband internet access, reliable transportation, and a lack of segregation and violence." Unquote. The present moment offers a unique opportunity to convert the broadening recognition of these deficiencies in action. Graduates, this present moment is your moment. You have the right, and might I add the responsibility, to seize this moment and work to change this world, your world, to create a healthier future for all of us. You are a fearless generation, but there is yet much to fear, including violence, hate, irrationality, and the subjugation of science to politics. Here in the United States, some have adopted wokeness as a pejorative term to express their contempt toward the idea that all of us, our cultures, our histories, and our contributions should be valued, valued the same. Those who rail against wokeness are a threat to all of us in public health and all that we're tri striving to achieve. So graduates, Gen Zers, <laughs> wear your wokeness as a badge of honor. And no matter your race, your religion, your country of origin, your sex defined by what's between your legs, and your gender defined by what's between your ears. Don't let any of those things keep you from putting your passion to work for a better world. If you do this, as President Hamilton said, I am confident that the human race is gonna be so much better off. You have the right to give yourself permission to do the thing you're most passionate about. So graduates, go get at it. You've got this. And Godspeed on your journeys ahead. Thank you so much. Can y'all see why I invited him to come? So Dr. Hildreth uh, is my first graduation ceremony, and I don't know if you all know this, but Meharry is starting a school of global public health, and we plan on being their full partner in this effort. Dr. Hildreth, we are honored. You blessed us today. And on behalf of the students and the faculty of the NYU School of Global Public Health, we present you with this honor and say thank you for what you've done in the world. Thank you for inspiring us, and we look forward to seeing more of you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you to our speakers. It is now my honor to introduce our phenomenal student speaker who is graduating today with her Master of Public Health. In addition to earning her MPH with a concentration in global health, Nada Hamad co-founded the Public Health and Medicine Society at GPH, and she was a research intern at NYU Langone Health. Please join me in a warm welcome for Nada Hamad.
Good afternoon, esteemed guests, esteemed faculty members, parents, and my fellow graduates of the class of 2023. It's an absolute honor to stand here today on this particular occasion as we celebrate the culmination of years of hard work, dedication, and commitment to our studies. As I reflect on my journey at NYU GPH, I can vividly recall my first day in class when I was still consumed with a sense of uncertainty about what the future held. As a Lebanese student, I come from a country that has faced many struggles and instabilities fueled by the complexity of political and ethnic diversity. But as I listened to the compelling narratives of my fellow graduates who bravely recounted their personal struggles in their respective home countries, including the unfinished agenda of infectious diseases, the lack of clean water and sanitation, and even shootings and gun violence in high schools, I was profoundly moved. Their unwavering resilience and sheer determination in the face of health challenges were nothing short of inspiring, igniting a flame of hope within me. After two years, I am filled with a sense of gratitude for the journey we have undertaken in academic achievement, community service, and personal growth. Despite coming from diverse communities and backgrounds, we came together, worked collaboratively, encouraged each other, and witnessed each other personal and professional growth. Our shared experiences have brought us to a heightened awareness that in matters of health, the world has become a single neighborhood. A neighborhood that eagerly awaits your ethics, creative ideas, and imaginative solutions that you, as emerging leaders, will undoubtedly bring to bear. Allow me to share one of my favorite quotes by Paul Farmer, which continues to resonate with me today. In a graduation speech he gave in 2012, he stated, with rare exceptions, all of your most important achievements on this planet will come from working with others, or in a word, partnership. As you venture forth and make your mark in the world, I urge you to take these words to heart, utilizing the power of collaboration and partnership to make meaningful impacts in the lives of those around you. And always remember that you are here for a reason. Whatever your academic or professional path may lead, all of you will be responsible for turning knowledge into action. So as we embark on our individual journey, let us never forget the invaluable lessons we learned at NYU GPH and continue to embrace equity, promote diversity, and work tirelessly towards a world where every single individual has access to the resources and opportunities they need to lead healthy and fulfilling lives. Finally, I would like to express my deepest gratitude to the faculty and staff of NYU GPH and to our families and friends for their unwavering support and guidance throughout our journey. I would also like to express a special thank you in my native language to my parents who are watching us overseas. Emil Halwe, Baye, and Ammi. I appreciate you a lot on this year and you a lot and 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 finally, to my fellow graduates, congratulations on this momentous achievement. We have come so far and I am so confident that we will make an incredible impact in the field of public health. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Nada, for that inspirational message. Please accept this expression of our appreciation and congratulations
for being selected as the 2023 GPH student Thank speaker. You so Now, we proudly present the recipients of GPH honors and awards. Please join me in welcoming to the podium, Dr. Melody Goodman, Vice Dean, <laughs> Vice Dean of Research, and a professor in the Department of Biostatistics, director of the GPH Center for Anti-Racism, Social Justice, and Public Health. Good afternoon, everyone. I am honored to recognize some very special award recipients who are graduating today. It is my great privilege to present the Public Health Research Awards to two remarkable students. These awards are given annually for research of high caliber that demonstrates potential, receives external recognition, applies critical thinking, and contributes to public health globally. At the graduate level, I'm thrilled to present this award to Samantha Harris. Samantha earned her MPH with a concentration in public health nutrition. She plans to complete her internship at New York Presbyterian Hospital and to pursue certification as a res registered dietitian. Congratulations, Samantha. Please come up and receive your award. At the undergraduate level, the Public Health Research Award goes to Yifan Lei. Yifan graduates with his bachelor's degree today, co-majoring in global public health and anthropology. In addition to conducting research in the global, in the GPH Urban Epidemiology Lab, he served as an NYU presidential intern, working to establish a university-wide research center. Congratulations, Yifan, come up and receive your award. It is now my pleasure to introduce Dr. Donna Shelley, Vice Dean of Faculty for Fa Affairs and Professor in the Department of Public Health Policy and Management. Thank you. It's such a pleasure to be here with all you graduates, family, and friends. And it is my honor uh, to introduce, to recognize the recipients of the 2023 Public Health Social Justice Award. These awards are given annually to students who are committed to equity from both an activist and an academic perspective, who affect change in community or organization, and who have developed a thoughtful philosophy of social justice in public health. Our graduate awardee is Chrysolite Mongoli, who has worked as a juvenile justice volunteer with the Administration for Children's Services at a detention center in the Bronx, and as an emergency medicine pediatric volunteer at New York City Health and Hospitals. Congratulations, Chris Light. Please come up to receive your award. Our undergraduate award is Yemi Charles. She worked at GPH's Empower Lab and at an intervention program at New York City Health and Hospitals. After graduation, she is moving to Thailand to continue her studies in gender-based violence and health as a loose scholar. Congratu congratulations, Lilyemi. Please come up to receive your award. Please welcome to the podium Dr. Karen Faber, Director of the Undergraduate Experiential Learning, Director of Public Health Practice, and Clinical Professor of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Dr. Faber. Thank 
you, Dr. Shelley. It is my honor to announce the recipient of the two, 2023 Public Health Practice and Leadership Award, which is given annually to creative projects with significant impact that demonstrate a commitment to practice, leadership within the community, the potential for future contributions, and scholarship that brings distinction to the field. I am thrilled to present this award to Kaylee LaMarche. A native New Yorker, Kaylee earned her MPH with a concentration in global health. In addition to her coursework as a fellow at the CDC, she conducted epidemiology research to increase surveillance capacity for neglected tropical diseases in Puerto Rico. Congratulations, Kaylee. Please, well, you're here to get your award. <laughs> Now I'd like to introduce Dr. Joyce Moon Howard, Director of Undergraduate Programs and Clinical Associate Professor of Social and Behavioral Sciences and of Community Health Science and Practice. Dr. Howard. Good afternoon. I am honored to recognize two extraordinary students who are recipients of the 2023 Service to Community Award. This award is given annually for a consistent, unyielding, dedicated to serving NYU and the broader community through volunteer roles or personal endeavors via active participation in a range of activities and with a demonstrated commitment to wellness and social connection to all. At the graduate level, we recognize Felicity Welch, who has simultaneously earned both Master of Public Health and Master of Social Work degrees. Her dedication to service has led her from North Carolina to Kenya and Tanzania in East Africa and to Phoenix and Brooklyn here in the States, as she focused on holistic programming and reducing health disparities. Congratulations, Felicity. And now, at the undergraduate level, we recognize Chanel Batroun, who graduated today with her bachelor's degree co-majoring in global public health and biology. She is, committed, she is a committed activist in vulnerable communities, raising funds and conducting research, as well as being an, uh, an advocate for organ donations and receiving the um, Red Cross um, volunteer work as well. Congratulations, Chanel. Please come up to receive your award. And now I would like to invite to the podium Dr. Daniel Fogo, Assistant Professor of Bioethics. Dr. Fogo. Thank you, Dr. Moon Howard. It's my honor to announce uh, the recipient of the 2023 Teaching Excellence Award. It's an award that's uh, chosen annually by GPH faculty to recognize a colleague who has demonstrates superior classroom skills and curriculum uh, development. So this year's awardee is Dr. David Abramson, who's consistently <laughs> Dr. Abramson's consistently high evaluations from both students and peers alike confirm that he is engaged, uh, motivated, and inspired um, in his teaching and in his uh, mentorship. 
He's a clinical associate professor who examines the population health consequences of disasters, the communication strategies that foster resilience, and the complex systems required for long-term recovery. Congratulations, David. I'd like to welcome to the podium uh, Natalie uh, Pinder, an MPH graduate who will carry the banner for GPH at Wednesday's 2023 All-NYU Commencement Exercises. Thank you, Dr. Fogel. It is my honor to present the 2023 Faculty of the Year Award, which is given annually by GPH students to recognize the lasting impact a dedicated teacher can have as a catalyst for academic success. This year's recipient is Dr. Mary Armstrong Hoff, who exemplifies excellence, fosters trust and equity, connects students to resources, and encourages them to be socially conscious and culturally competent. Dr. Armstrong Hoff is an assistant professor of social and behavioral sciences and epidemiology, whose research in respiratory disease and field work in the US, Japan, Uganda, Ethiopia, and Nepal aims to develop interventions that ensure all patients receive evidence-based care. Congratulations, Dr. Armstrong Hoff. Please join me to receive your award. And now, for the moment we've all been waiting for, the presentation of our graduates. Congratulations to you, the graduating class of NYU School of Global Public Health. I want to congratulate all of you graduating from NYU School of Global Public Health. I'm sending you our very best wishes as you graduate and begin to make your invaluable contributions to improve our nation's health. Thank you. Congratulations to you, to your families, and to your loved ones. Good luck, and God bless you. I'm sure as you come here today, you're prepared, that you care enough, that you know enough, that you have the courage to do enough and that you are determined to persevere until the job is done. We need you and we thank you for having come this far. So congratulations, New York University School of Global Public Health. We need you more than ever. My experience at GPH was diverse, amazing. It was very enriching. The environment has been amazing. It's a city where people can freely dream and achieve so much. I've learned so much about being confident, putting myself out there. It's a life-changing experience. To be in, in the same space with faculty and my peers who come from different avenues in life, they come from different cultures, different languages, and we all come together and pull in our ideas. It was a very enriching experience for me. I was meeting professors from so many different backgrounds and experiences. I feel ready to take on the real world after. My experience at NYU GPH has been amazing. Every experience is invaluable here, and I feel really proud and honored to be a part of one of the highly esteemed universities like NYU. 
My favorite class at NYU was Urban Health Equity with Dr. Joe Ivy Buford. My favorite professor was Professor Gedman. She makes me love epi. Psychiatric Epidemiology with Professor Goldman. Global Issues in Social and Behavioral Health with Dr. David Abrams and Dr. Raymond Nayara. My favorite professor is Dr. Moaz Abdelwadud, he has been an amazing mentor. My study abroad course in London with Dr. Abramson, the social and behavioral health with Professor Alexis Merginoff. All of the nutrition professors were a pretty small cohort, so I got to know all of them really well. My favorite professor is Professor Coyle. I feel like me and her have a bond that is amazing. I'm gonna miss everything. <laughs> So one thing I'm going to miss is my co-workers from the Center for Anti-Racism, Social Justice, and Public Health. I'm going to miss studying at the third floor at the GPH. I'm really going to miss my friends. I hope to keep in touch right now. A lot of us are going on different paths, which is very exciting. The beautiful view of Washington Square Park from Kimmel Center on the seventh floor. Walking around proud, carrying my NYU ID. I'm going to miss that. New York University has been like my family and I'm gonna miss my NYU family. I'm gonna miss the life in New York City. NYC has always been a dream of mine that finally came true. What I'm not going to miss are the deadlines, the headaches from <laughs> the ratings, a lot of the ratings. <laughs> yeah, just managing your mental health as a student, full-time student. <laughs> I think I will miss that. One thing I won't really miss is my commute to NYU. It's been a little bit of a struggle. <laughs> the late night classes. There's a lot of late night classes here and staying up so late until 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. in the library on campus when it's scary and dark and freezing. Definitely not gonna miss that. I think there's nothing I'm not gonna miss at NYU. Great people, the diversity. Yeah, I'll miss everything. Congratulations to all of our GPH graduates. Congratulations, class of 2023. Congratulations, everybody. As your vice dean for research, I hope you're prepared to address all the research endeavors ahead of you. And as a professor of biostatistics, I hope you get to touch a lot of data and make data-driven decisions in your public health career. Congratulations. On behalf of the Office of Academic Affairs, congratulations, class of 2023. We look forward to seeing how you will change the world. We're so excited for you. Now you know that there are plenty of hazards out there, but don't let that shake your foundation. Be focused and convert those hazards into opportunities. You have the skills, so get to it. Congratulations on a wonderful accomplishment. Congratulations, class of 2023. We expect great things from all of you. Keep in touch and best of luck. Congratulations to all of my advisees in the Global Health Concentration. Shout out to community health students, public health nutrition, and SBS students. Congratulations to our graduates. Uh, you have worked very hard and you are ready to enter the professional world with your many skills and your knowledge. On behalf of the Center for Bioethics, we wish you all the best in your future endeavors. Shout out to the Environmental Public Health Concentration and Biosats. I couldn't be here with you today, but I am standing proudly with you in spirit on this special day. I hope that you will take the knowledge and skills that you have gained here at NYU and move forward in the world to make meaningful and impactful change. I and NYU are with you now and always. Congratulations to our graduates on behalf of the nutrition program. Go out and do great things. All the best. Big shout out to, to all my advisees, police and management students, epidemiology students, and to all international students at NYU GPH. Class of 2023, you have all my heart, and I know there is nothing you can't accomplish. Shout out to my parents, family, friends. I'd like to give a shout out to both my parents um, and my sister Sarah. Um, and my grandma for their countless support throughout this journey. Moving to New York, um, living here for the first time. I love you all, thank you so much. Thank you, mom. And my sister, Kirti, I love you. You've meant the world to me. You have helped me every step of the way. Seeing my dad's constant efforts to give back to our community is actually one of the reasons that inspired me to pursue a career in public health. So thank you, Amu Abu. I love you guys. A special thanks to my dad. He was a support system throughout this journey. I want to thank my family, especially my mom and dad. Thank you so much for all the support that you gave me throughout these years. And I hope I made you proud. I want to thank mom and dad for continually supporting me. I want to thank my boyfriend who sat with me through all of my Zoom classes. I love you all and I'm here graduating 
thanks to you. Shout out to my London 2023 J-Term course uh, with Dr. Abramson. Shout out to my mom, who has been one of my biggest supporters, uh, my family, my closest friends, uh, and my husband as well. I would like to dedicate my graduation to my mom, my NYU family, and my loved ones, and all my friends around the world. Thank my families, especially my parents, who has been really supportive to my decisions, especially the financial support. Shout out to my mom, dad, and brother, who hopefully are in the crowd if they actually bought their tickets to New York. <laughs> <laughs> here and um, shout out to my advisor Andrea because literally couldn't have done this without him. My family here who have been the everything to me, um, they, they're the reason why I'm standing here and then my family back in Mexico as well have been supporting me. Shout out to my family and friends especially my mother Jyoti for being so encouraging all throughout my academic career and also shout out to the entire NYU community for giving me an unforgettable experience. I hope you all enjoyed the video, but now is really the moment we've been waiting for, the presentation of our graduates. To announce our doctoral student graduates, please welcome Dr. Daniel Ompad, who directs the program for the Doctorate of Philosophy in Public Health. She is also the Vice Dean for Academic Affairs and Professor of Epidemiology. I would ask as the graduates receive their diplomas, please refrain from shaking hands so we can get all of you through very efficiently. Thank you. Good afternoon. It is my honor to introduce the students receiving their Doctorate of Philosophy in Public Health. I'd like to invite Dean Deborah Fur Holden to the stage to congratulate our graduates as they walk across the stage. Are you ready? May I present Dr. Shamir Ali. His dissertation is Deconstructing the Influence of Family in the Diet of Asian American Young Adults, Exploring the Role of Family Structure, Characteristics, and Interaction Patterns. I invite his advisor, Dr. Niati Parekh, Professor of Public Health Nutrition, to take the stage. Next, I present Dr. Bridget Murphy Hussein. Her dissertation is Concordance with DASH Dietary Score and Health Outcomes Among South Asians in the Mediators of Atherosclerosis in South Asians Living in America Study, or the Masala Study. Her advisor is also Dr. Parekh. Next, I present Dr. Shelby Brewer. Her dissertation is the effectiveness of state mask use policies as a COVID-19 mitigation strategy, perceptions and outcomes among African Americans. I invite her advisor, Dr. Jose Pagan, chair and professor of the Department of Public Health Policy and Management to the stage. Last, but certainly not least, I present Dr. Jacqueline Litvak. Her dissertation is Ultra-Processed Foods in Early Childhood, Predictors and Outcomes in a Low-Income Hispanic Population. I invite her advisor, Dr. Andrea Deerline, Associate Professor of Public Health Nutrition, to the stage. Congratulations to all. We will now present our graduate and undergraduate students, beginning with those who have earned a Master of Arts in Bioethics. Their names will be announced by Dr. Matthew Liao, Chair for the Center of Bioethics. Is 
So I want to congratulate all the MA in bioethics, starting with uh, Emily Anderson. <laughs> and Asta. <laughs> Gianna Balanza. <laughs> Lena Benson. <laughs> Ann Berman. Lacey Campbell, Zachary Ferry, Eric Field, Signe Golash, Noah Lamers, John Quain, <laughs> Hannah Rice, <laughs> Maria Urutia, <laughs> Fang Yue Zhang, Now we present our students who have earned a Master of Science in Epidemiology. Congratulations, everyone. I'd like to present Bao Ling Chang. Annie Chen. Jermaine Kabutaulaka. <laughs> Kabir Maju. <laughs> Jane Mao. <laughs> Yixiao Song. Now we present our students who have earned a Master of Science in Biostatistics. Irving Angel Angelas. Angelas. <laughs> Connie uh, Badarilna. Fan B. <laughs> Yan Tao. <laughs> Lu Chen. <laughs> Xiao Ting Chen. <laughs> Yi Wen Chen. Yang Chen. <laughs> Zhi Hao Chen. <laughs> Yun Ying Chen. <laughs> Yu Han Cui. Zhan Ling Dong. Shi <laughs> Lei Du. Xin <laughs> Yue Du.
Xin Yue Feng. Yu Xuan Feng. Zhi Fan Gao. Yi Ning Guo. Michelle He. Shi Jia Guo. Wan Yu Hua. Ming Qi Huang. Si Qi Huang. Nei Shu Grace Johnson. Antonata Kyrie Tian Qi Lan Jing Wen Lei Jian Li Hao Ping Li Ke Xing Li Yu Jie Li Zhuo Fei Li Nai Yue Liang Miao Ling Chang Irene Liu Feng Liu Ri Liu Ting Lu Marina Mount Mountainer Van Zanter <laughs> Ray Nye <laughs> Ray Yu Qi. Emma Raisiner. <laughs> Madeline Saporito. <laughs> Sharasa Sensio Mudra.
秋衣神。坤泽史，廷家史，玉小宋Pranja Srivastava, Xinya Tao, Ching Song Cai. 子瑶 ，one。嘉琛，王。舒涵，王。赢，王。王，中阳王，家君尧，思雨微。Tiara Wen, Sherry Wu, Yu Feng Xiao, Meng Qi Xiong. Tong Xu, Yi Fan Xu, Yu Feng Yuan, Xiao Feng Yang. 克莱尔·杨、雷贝卡·于、瑞明·于雅文元、丁文章、雷阳章、若秋元章。婉玲、张、香雨、张、雅琪、张
Yuan Qi Zhao. Yu Xuan Zhao. Yi Hao Zheng. Yi Ru Zheng. Yu Ren Zhou. Jun Yu Zhu. Now we present our dual degree students who, in addition to their Master of Public Health, have simultaneously earned a second master's degree. Narissa Dahlia. Lori Lamb. Alina Carrara. Riley Fitzpatrick. Jane Lindemo. Felicity Welch. We now present our students who have earned their Master of Public Health in Biostatistics. Antonin Amasmaki Ku. Yi Chen. Keith Lee. Anxing Grace Ling. Ali Naza. Xu Hui Wang. Angel Zhou. Joseph John Obi. Li Zhen Chen. Next, we present our students who have earned their Master of Public Health in Community Health Science and Practice. Cameron Atticut. Iman Ali. Kiana Onoya.
Catherine Apostol. Anisha Balag. Julia Baldwin. Fatu Berry. Luna Canola. Dakari Carroll. Lauren DeCalzo. Nelia Ekaji. Ian Flowers. Aura Friedman. Mara Karamatopoulos. Madison Kasperzik. Alejandro Loho. Tala Mahmoud. Kainoa? Kainoa Nagao. Chetna Nagangia. <laughs> Stephanie Perez. Whitney Peters. Sierra Ramirez. Victoria Rodriguez. Mariah Romero. Dylan Shore. Michelle Scalfani. Olivia Schur. Maham Tharik. Tanya Terrazon. <laughs> Melody Toe. <laughs> Kevin Wong. <laughs> Jocelyn Yanez. Pearl Anna Zapataki. We now present our students who have earned their Master of Public Health in Environmental Public Health Sciences. Okay. Dia Beggs. Nicholas Howe. <laughs> Duan Ching Lee. <laughs> Xi.
Shi Wen Cheryl Liang. Annette Mendez. Jordan Neisler. Madeline West. Shinyi Zhang. Now we present our students who have earned their Master in Public Health in Epidemiology. Natalie Pinder. <laughs> Nina Abukahak. <laughs> Sahar Alam. Hannah Berhe. Walter Carlos. George Sadeño. <laughs> Isabel Chede. Erica Geltz. Rebecca George. Lauren Gover. Ashwarya Govindan Govindarajan. Jesse Graves. <laughs> Alizende Guerra. <laughs> Menaz Hassan. <laughs> Sheila Herzog. Alexander Holbrook. <laughs> Zainab Jaffrey. <laughs> Aditi Kumbar. <laughs> Mandy Lacroix. Christy Lilu, Wan Rang Lin, Ariana Lopez, Sumbal Mari, Justin McClendon. Ariel McKnight. Priya Najiredi. Farha Naj. Alan Najina, <laughs> Josephine Nielsen, <laughs> Nonye Okafor, <laughs> Priscilla Panarello. A 
Athanasia Papadopoulos. Partiv Patel. Rimpel Patel. Gabriela Prado. Yamima Prophet. Dion Rajmani. Asha Deepakumar Raval. Courtney Robinson. Eric Rockman. Dana Sokara. Anna Varela. Vandana Venkat. Tiniha Vinson. Erin Ware. Heather Yu. Nikki Zangbari. Daria Zarzeka. <laughs> Sheng Ji Ji. Now we present our students who have earned their Master of Public Health in Global Health. Nadia Wadid Hamid. <laughs> Kaylee Lamerch. <laughs> Opa Matele Ayo. <laughs> Crystal Light Mongoli. Omalayo Ojala. Abdul Rahman Alush. Kristen Ahmed. Galatia Araya. Nasra Aprena. <laughs> Sanjam Basnet. <laughs> Amber Begg. Barbara Brown. Krupa Borda. Hamani Chetri.
Kaylee Clayton. Sarah Cassetti. Eve Curran. Sarah Satanovich. Hardy Gallo. Gina De La Sain. Gina De La Chenay. Rachel. Rachel De La Mo. Tatiana Dozer. Olivia Doshan. Tessa Lee Jane Duma. Udani Mboja. Naran Al Ashri. Claudia Azran. <laughs> Heather Floyd. <laughs> Leah Fritz. Sophia Friedman. Kimberly Garland. Okay. Natalie Gonzalez Perez. Madison Gray. Loden Grafell. <laughs> Anisha Hushman. <laughs> Nosheen Inyet. <laughs> Kenny and Sufi. Yoshin Jen. Yoshin Jian. Yoshu Han Jian. Corinne Josham Tendo. Judith Caitlin Nelson. Twaisha Nana.
Claire Kingsbury. Necha Lamartiania. Grace Landrigan. Julia Lascaris. Jamie Lee. Jenna McLeod. Cameron Mitkiff. Rudana Mohammed. Janet Luniaji Mogo Fofa. Priyanka Unashabe Pushpalata Nakar. Karin Deaye. Ashley Nicholas. Ayeva Nikney Jad. Fatima Noor. Afushat Abidemi Olani Wan. Victoria Onoe. Karina Palacio. Shubra Pant. Ping Ping Wu. Caitlin Peel. Linda Fung. Justice Kwaye. Fardeen Rahman. Aruj Rahja. Aishwarya Rao. Mariam Razak. Nancy Christina Rial. Rebecca Haya Ritterman. Morgan Roberts. Cassandra Mary Rosit. Callie Seaman. Noor Sarafe. Semhal Selumawi. Victoria Shafaru. Manushi Shah. Carolina Nazanin Shams. Priyanka Sharma. Shivani Shinoi. Vivashri Shukla. Kelsey Jean Simons. Lexi Spencer. <laughs> Lily Stobel. <laughs> Sarah, 
Stephy Christie, Mariama Stevenson, Umu Sila, Hikari Tanaka, Niyumi Tesvuzikta. Diksha Shakar, Imani Thompson, Ruvian Iris Tindan, Emily Thakar. Sushita Wagmari, Annie Vopniarski, Robin Wright, Yahui Yang, Emily Zambiezi. Carol Zhang, <laughs> Sofia Zuniga, <laughs> Mariana Wu, Now we present our students who have earned their Master of Public Health in Nutrition. Samantha Harris. Marissa Aponte. Michael Barbella. Fatumata Cisse. Chloe Davis. Joanna Fitzmaurice. Deandra Ford. Dana Herbsman. Maggie Hung. Yugua Ma. Wensing Mao. Shri Valley Marisetti. Tazmo Yasin. Ilvra Morad. Tamalin Onese. Madison Plavit. Denise Pueblo. <laughs> Carolyn Ryland. Shuanya Shi. <laughs> Yashan Shi. <laughs> Avanti Shirshat. <laughs> Joen Sho. Abby Weltman. Hani Shell. Shinbei Yu. Yi Yang Zhang. Congratulations. We now present our students who have earned their Master of Public Health in Health Policy and Management. Emanuela Abawagi Mensa.
Angel Ray Alejandro. Anusha Ali. Alyssa Alvarez. Samantha Amako. Marvin Apeku. Tony Ann Artafishio. Jenna Atia Mohammed. Jasmine Minbar. Armin Beheshitian. Calvin Chiang Zeng. Ashley Costa. Hannah Crean. Finian Dakuna. Miyuki Doke, Doki. Patrick Donovan. Mateo Espinoza. Winston Fopalan. Isha Gudkari. Suditi Gotam. Sarah Hashamian. Nizar Hodeli. Gionel Hayu. <laughs> Ali Hussein. Tanzim Islam. Bridget Jacoby. Kate Kaminsky. Ekaterina Kiskiadze. Amrita Kular. Cynthia Lee. Chen Yi Lee. Louisa Lindgren. Raul Jaimes. Jennifer Lyons. Haley Muneri. Nilza Louise John. Rudy Michaud. Rita Mir. Shana Moore Pierre. Thomas O'Neill. Mihet Paul. Jacqueline Parati. Ashley Phillips. Riza Panuda. Amritha Ramaswamai. Dana Miller. Emma Rauscher. Actually easier. Dana Rayendar. Joelina Rodriguez. 
Ilaha Sarta Alam. Julian Sazo. Samatha Shetty. Sharmisha Shinde. Sarah Simon. Kyle Stinkowski. Sabrina Sultana. Asita Sila. James Toussaint. Sudev Varma. Anne Marie Voya. Leslie Ortiz Calwaldeldor. Polashade Olatenga. Colby Britton. Nicole Medina. Madison Wall. Julia Wilcom. Yuchi Young. Cassidy Zane. Nail Zuberi. Alik Ashtargo. Faria Putal. Regine Rokia. Now we present our students who have earned their Master of Public Health in Social and Behavioral Sciences. Gina Angelotti. <laughs> Emilia Ascaneo Carrera. Allison Brunogli. Bren Fitzmorris. Anushka Haldar. Joanna Horvath. Lamia Hussein. George Ibarra. <laughs> David Isaacs. Threet Kupar. Buki Majek. Samuel Martin. Amelia Pizarro. Ashley Sanchez Garcia. Vivian Yi. Now we, now we present our students who have earned their Masters of Public Health in Sustainable Development Goals. Ingrid Bertomio.
Catherine Lindsay. Sering Dolakar. Sarah Inyung Wang. Now we present our students who have successfully fulfilled the global public health components of the Bachelor of Arts or Bachelor of Science degrees in their disciplines. Yifan Li. Chanel Bujan. Chanel Bujan. Lola Yemi Charles. Haley Ackerman. London Adams. Madeline Asbin. Daniel Taye Okande. Michelle Alvarado. Christina Ashley Alvarez. Chinelo Amefule. Sarah Amirali. Srinidhi Ananth. Lucy Avant. Just one second. Ethan Bukal. Evan Bellary. Bellary. Evan Baleri Banawaye. Mireya Bowser. Abigail Bracio. Trinity Casimir. Renata Severa. Alexandra Chapman. Syra Koi Hume. Jessica Crespo. Zyra Darwish. Ojeda. I love it. Tony Deluxe. Minhi Han. Leah Nancy Diminich. Samuel Izionu. <laughs> Tumi Falode. <laughs> Lee Ashley Fang. Is it Felige? Titi Felige. Kazin Fofana. <laughs> Shannon Ganpat. <laughs> Gabriela Emma Garcia. <laughs> oh. <laughs> 
to, to okay. Gabriela Garcia. Christelle Glodin. Ava White. Howen Young. Ile Young. Julia Hoffman. Naya Howard. <laughs> Jameson Jacoby. Simran Kang. Kian King. Phoebe Lalane, Gavin Lee, Vivian Lee, Sarah Lee, Saisha Malhotra. Hamleni Martinez. Darby McCusker. Victoria Medina. Jaylee Marie Mendel. Anika Mohan. Nayeli, Nayeli Maranta. Sure. One more. Maya Nagashima. Maya Navarro. Isofi Nanye. Alia Odusanya. Kingsley Ogera. Emma Osterfeld. Adobe Osefmaka. Tracy. Wakube, Lisa Pardi, Noella Parodi, Kara Pauly, Alyssa Pay. Alexandria Pena. Cheryl Quenu. Philip Reyes. Leslie Rodillas Perez. Aisha Desamaso. No, Aisha too. Two Samaso. Sorry. Avni Sangve. Natalie Shoji. Nicole Victoria Menendez. Maria Pia Villasencio. 
Michael Sol Soltero. Yeah, Michael. Jennifer Stolarczyk. Ashika Taylor. Shakira Thompson. Melanie Torres. Madison Taylor Trujillo. Camille Valver. Victoria Vandrost. Mari Yasumi. Pooja Yeram. Well, everybody, it looks like folks have had a long day. <laughs> for the people that are here, please give a round of applause for those that are remaining. No, no need, yes, no need to drag it out. I just want to give one special acknowledgement to our inaugural Chief Marshal, who's also a member of our Dean's Council and she is a GPH alumni, Dr. Anne Marie Badeau. We present to you our inaugural Chief Marshal Award. Since you all now have your credentials, go forward, make a huge difference in the world, and know that you are forever with us. I love you all, be safe, and congratulations.